Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. On tonight's show, I'm so excited to be on location at Urban Oaks Farm in downtown New Britain, Connecticut. My guest tonight is actually my host as well, Terry Walters, author of Clean Food, and she is going to give us a tour of the farm as well as talk to us a little bit about the importance of community-supported agriculture. Terry, thank you so much for hosting us here today. Oh, it's great to be here. I'm glad the rain stopped and we're going to get to take a tour of the that's farm. That's true. It's going to be a little muddy, but other than that, it might be a little <laughs> wet. But we'll get to see everything that's happening and, and everything that's growing and how we can eat seasonally. It'll be great. So how did you discover Urban Oaks? Well, you know, I was uh, moved back to the area about eight years ago, and a friend actually said, you know, there's a farm and it's organic and it's in downtown New Britain, and I said, there's just no way. There's no way that there's an urban farm that's organic. And I believe at the time that it was the largest organic urban farm on the East Coast and the largest organic urban farm in the state. Wow. And so I came over and we are sitting right now in a brand new storefront that has been um, renovated for the farm. But when I started coming here, on Friday afternoons, there was a greenhouse, and they set up the farmer's market in the greenhouse, and from 2 to 6, and took it down at the end of the day. And they physically set the greenhouse up. Physically set it up wow. for the store. Yeah. Wow. And so this is all very new, and I started coming every Friday, and I started um, bringing my children, and um, purchasing my produce, not only for my family, but for the classes that I teach, and, uh, and the love story began there, and I've been coming ever since. So it's a full-time, a, full, a year-round farm. I mean, right now we're seeing the abundance of summer, even though it's been a rainy summer. But Actually, I know most people like the abundance of summer and all the fresh produce of summer. My favorite time is in the early spring, March and April, when the greens are just bursting out of the greenhouse. And this farm is in operation year-round, and the farm stand is actually open year-round. Fridays and Saturdays to accommodate throughout the peak growing season, but Friday afternoons straight every single week of the year. Really? Yeah. And open to the public. Open to the public, Friday afternoons, yes. That would be interesting just to pop in and see what, what is growing in the winter. Yeah, and if you come by and you've never been, absolutely tap someone on the shoulder, and if it's not too busy, we'd love to take you through the greenhouses like we're going to do today. Okay. And it's a great way. The more you come, the more you start to understand what's growing locally, what's growing seasonally. And it helps you to um, maintain balance in your body, to be eating seasonally, to be supporting our local farms, mm -hmm. um, and keep in balance with our environment. So, well, the environmental, it's not an environmental impact because none of these things have been shipped from across the country. They're right here. So they, it's just a very short car ride absolutely. from West Hartford. And you can't get fresher, you can't get better nutritional value, and I can tell you that you can't get better taste just because of the care and the integrity and the love that all of the produce is grown with here, you taste that when you bring it home. So there's definitely a difference in the taste. Yeah. That's great. Should we go on a tour? I would love to. Okay, let's go. This is the farm store, and you're going to see some great organic produce here, all seasonal, all grown right here at Urban Oaks, as well as some terrific produce that we bring in from other area farmers, so you get a really complete market here. You'll see as we're going through that some of the signs will specify whether it's Urban Oaks, but most will say Connecticut grown, which means that even if you're using WIC checks, you can use those here, so that makes agriculture and it makes organic produce accessible to so many more people. 
here we have a great selection of peppers. I always tell people you want to eat a rainbow of color. So you can see, we're going to see a rainbow of color from these great little bell peppers to yellows and purples. We've got some great fine peppers. Throw these on your grill, throw them in a salad. You're going to be good to go. You come around. This is one produce item that I always thought was from Mexico, and then all of a sudden one day they showed up at Urban Oaks, and I was thrilled to know they grew locally. These are tomatillos. I love them, and they come with this, and they're great little home. They have a taste kind of like an apple and a tomato and a pear all mixed together. They go great with so many fresh summer produce items like cilantro and corn. Mix them with some black beans. I like to mix these with regular tomatoes and some fresh basil or lime basil. We have tons of different kinds of basil here as well. And you just peel them open and inside is the fruit. And you chop them just like a regular tomato. They're so beautiful, delicious. And you can find much of this produce because it's locally grown at many other farms in Connecticut. So it's really important, whether you're coming to Urban Oaks, whether you're going to a farmer's market in your hometown, or going to another farm and, and have a CSA, it's just so important to, to support our local farms. So over here, we have a great selection of produce. This is one of my favorites. This is hard neck garlic. We grow a lot of garlic here. The hard neck actually has stronger medicinal value and a more a stronger taste as well. You can see also the hard neck so it doesn't break, but there are big cloves in here. I don't know if I can get you to see that a little bit. But the big cloves, you don't get those little cloves with the hard neck, so really great, really fresh garlic taste. Wonderful this time of year. You come around, this is one of my other favorites. These are called Cipollini onions. I take these I bring them home by the handful, just like this. I don't wash them. I don't do anything. I just throw them right on top of my grill. And I char them so they're black. Take them off. When they're cool enough to touch, I just pinch off this little end, and I squeeze out the onion, drizzle a little olive oil and some coarse sea salt. They melt in your mouth. These are one of my favorite summer treats. So that's similar to like roasting garlic. So roast it in its roast it right skin. in its skin. And you pop it out when it's done. Yeah, and you can eat them plain. You can mix them. Last week I mixed them with some um, grilled peaches. Delicious relish. You can put them in a salad, mix them with some black beans. You can serve them over some grilled chicken or some grilled fish. They're just wonderful. We've got a great selection of potatoes. The fingerlings are one of my favorites, and they come not this time of year, we're a little early, but by the end of September and into the fall, you're gonna see these in lots of colors. Terrific little potatoes mixed with some fresh herbs, some rosemary. The garlic that we saw earlier actually has scapes that grow, and you can chop up those scapes and mix them with your, your potatoes. So lots of great tomato uh, potato variety. We're gonna keep going over here. Over here, we've got a variety. Now, you can see, and you might find this at other farmer's markets, so Urban Oaks doesn't grow these mushrooms, but they bring them in from a local farmer. These are mitakis, which are a wonderful mushroom. I love these mixed right here. You just break them up. I love them sauteed and served over polenta. They're just really wonderful. We've got all sorts of different mushrooms. Reach over here, get some nice roots. Roots are so grounding. We've got ginger, we've got turmeric. And some of my favorites are the beets. Now, I don't know about you, but if I bring beets home and put them in the refrigerator, they stay there until they're bad. So what I do is I take the beets, I purposely don't bag them at the farm. And when I get home, the first thing I do is I take a pot of water and bring it to boil on the stove and put the beets in it go about my business, finish unpacking. When they're soft, I take them off. All you have to do is peel the skin right off, and if you don't know what to do with them yet, just put them in a bowl and put them in the refrigerator, but then you know they're ready to go when you are. You can chop them up, drizzle a little um, red wine vinegar over them. I like to put some dill on them and some olive oil. You can slice them, you can mix them with whatever you want, some lentils, mataki mushrooms. It's all coming together now. Some of the potatoes, some of those Cipollini onions, so a great, great treat. 
over here, we have some other terrific local fruit. Now, I, I grew up thinking, well, fruit was oranges and bananas and apples, but there's some great fruit that actually grows terrific in Connecticut. This is one of my favorites. These are some yellow plums, super, super sweet. And you can see here, Woodland Farms, so brought right in locally. So those Connecticut-grown signs are, tell you they're from Connecticut. So. Everything will tell you where it's from. And whether you're shopping at Urban Oaks or anywhere else, it's your right to know where your food is from. So ask. And if they don't know, they're going to find out the answer. So the next time you go, they're going to have it. The more we create that demand, the more we're going to have the information that we want. So some great produce here, some great delicious cooling fruits, some great green beans. We've got leeks. We've got daikon, super cleansing. These are really beautiful. So this is a little less bitter than a regular radish, a little less of that bite. You just chop off the greens. You can grate this and put it in a salad. You can saute it. You can put it in the winter in your soups. And it's super, super heart healthy. So great for helping to lower cholesterol and regulate blood pressure. This is a, a real terrific addition to the diet that most people have never seen or heard of or know what to do with. One of the things that I like to do is when I see things at the farm that I'm not familiar with, I'll bring them home, just a small amount. And if you go on to, um, just go online and Google the name of the vegetable and then write recipe, you'll come up with so many great ideas. The last thing I want to show you before we go outside are the tomatoes. This is one of my favorite local pleasures. But this year we've had so much rain and we've had a horrible case of tomato blight, which is a bacterial um, airborne disease that gets tomatoes and potatoes and eggplants. So it's been a really tough year and all the rain has made it so that we haven't been able to fight the blight. And many local and regional farmers have lost much of their tomato crop. So this is a real problem. Tomatoes themselves in New England tend to be, um, create a great amount of demand. So when we don't have that income at farms like Urban Oaks and others in the area to balance off the rest of the year, it puts us in a tough position and all the more reason why we really hope you'll support your local farm. We do have a sample of tomatoes. Most years, Urban Oaks can have upwards of 100 different varieties of heirloom organic tomatoes. So why don't we go out into the fields and we can see what's happening. So now we're out in the field and we're going to see what this blight is all about. I'm here with Mike, who's one of the founders of Urban Oaks, and he's going to tell us what's happening this year. Mike? Hi. Um, yeah, with all the rain, we have the tomato blight that's causing big problems along the whole northeast. And what the blight does is basically it rots the plant, it rots the stem. First you can see all the, all the leaves turn black and they fall off the plants. Mm -hmm. And then it basically rots the stems on the plants, as you can even see up here. The oh, stems wow. basically just rot, so that the mm. the stems rot, and then the fruit themselves they actually rot. Wow! Mm. And so now, is this gonna? I'm looking around and I'm seeing this is really everywhere. So how does this spread? By spores. By spores that are airborne. Airborne, and they can travel up to 40 miles in the wind. And how, so, how did it get here? What I've been told is it came up from plants in Alabama. The, the box store sold the plants to the general public. Um, I'm not saying that it was a bad thing then, but then with all this rain, the rain brought out the disease. So and if we had started to get the sea signs of blight, is there something that you can do about it if we didn't have the rain? Well, there, there are different sprays, but being an organic farmer, and the sprays are expensive. It's like $300 a quart. You have to spray every day it rains. and so Between $300 a quart and it's been raining every day, so how can you spray? Yeah. Every day. Because you know? I'm looking around and all these plants are dying from the bottom up. If we were picking off some of these green tomatoes and, you know, putting them in my windowsill to see if, or just frying them up as green tomatoes, can that, can the blight harm me? No, it can't. So how much, um, 7,000 plants, how much loss is that for a farm like Urban Oaks? It's, it's around $100,000. $100,000. Oh my God. <laughs>
this is an organic farm, so what does that mean for the soil? Well, it's not supposed to be, it's supposed to die when the snow comes. And, and most of the other farms in New England are experiencing the same thing? I heard from a Georgia to Maine. Georgia wow. to Maine. Wow. And so now, my tomatoes in my backyard don't look like this. Is it just a matter of time? Hopefully, it's just, a, well, hopefully they won't get hit, but it's probably just a matter of time. I talked to somebody from the Department of Ag yesterday and says there's maybe a handful of tomato farms around the state that don't have the blight, mm -hmm. but he feels it's just a matter of time with this weather pattern we're in that wow. they're going to get it too. Um, wow. And the farms that don't have it are basically on high ground. They're really, they're just on high ground and they just haven't gotten it yet. Anywhere it's low, we're kind of in a little gully here, so we kind of get a lot of moisture in the summer. Well, wait, it's ur this is an urban environment, which it? is unique to urban oaks, which is great for education, great for reaching out to community. But last week when I was here, I remember seeing part of the farm underwater. So yeah. what does this mean? What's happening all this uh, rain? How is that affecting all of the other produce this summer? It's um, this is, uh, in 23 years of farming, this is the worst summer I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, our peppers are sitting still. Um, we planted beans three times. Some of the beans are doing okay, others have rotted. Um, eggplant never really made it through June. We planted them, the th they didn't grow at all. The flea beetles attacked when they were supposed to be growing in June and never really recouped through that. Um, some of them are starting to do okay now. But. Mm -hmm. So I, I see over here though, like the basil looks great. That's one thing that looks great this year. This year is the basil? The basil. The basil is doing great. So. Mm -hmm. And are other herbs, like what else is outside here? Because I, I know we're going to go into the greenhouses really soon and see what's in there as well. And the greenhouses support much of the farm throughout the winter with all of the dark leafy greens, the kales, the collards, and some herbs. But what else is outside this summer? Well, um, summer squash is doing okay. Summer squash loves heat, so if we had some more 90 degree days, they'd be happier. Mm -hmm. They're doing okay. Um, salad greens love the cool, damp, damp weather, so they're doing okay. Um, usually, we don't have lettuce in July and August. We have we have lettuce this summer, so that's 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 a plus. We're shooting this today. It's the first of August, and I was listening to the radio yesterday, and they were saying that this is the first August in recorded history. Perhaps it didn't even reach 90 degrees. So, and we're standing here today, and it's cool. It's breezy definitely humid <laughs> but it's not even 80 degrees today so and obviously there's not much sunshine it's really it's so challenging and I you know sometimes I think well geez I'm not running my air conditioner so it's a good thing but you have to realize the impact on the economy on our food supply is enormous it is. Yeah. I, and um, besides the tomato blight I don't know what it's gonna do to potato farmers you have to realize a lot of potatoes come from Maine so, and this blight's going to hit up there, so I'm sure it's going to... And a lot of those potato farmers farm nothing but potatoes. Potatoes. So at least there's some diversity here, and we can replant and try and use some of the space and the greenhouses so. to make up for some of that. So. Yeah. I'm hoping to see the government do something this year, because it's the whole East Coast, and maybe with all these incentives that the... the President Obama's giving out that he'll do something for the Recently. farmers on the East Coast. So. so maybe by the time this show airs, there'll be more information on that and it'll be a little more hopeful than it is right now. Why don't we take a walk in and go see what's in the greenhouses? Okay. We're here in one of Urban Oaks greenhouses and this is a great example to see how we're using this space growing vertically as well as the abundance of greens that we grow here year round. Mike, maybe you can tell us about what we've got here now and how this is going to change over the year. Okay. Well, in the summertime, we grow a lot of cucumbers. Actually, we kind of harvested them yesterday, so I can't really show you. Oh, there's one there. We do a lot of cucumbers. You go down farther, there's cucumbers from India, Tibet, all over the place. In front of us, we have Italian lachinata kale. Behind us, we have some peppers. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we switch all seasons. So in the, in the wintertime, there'll be um, English sugar snap peas growing up. Yeah, the kales will still be growing, but then we switch over to salad greens. We do a lot of salad greens. So endives, escarole, 20 different kinds of lettuces. You know, the greenhouses, I'm surprised that this is growing in the middle of summer in the greenhouses. It doesn't get too hot in here? Um, well, this summer's been a little cooler. Um, Lachinata tends to take the heat much better than other kales. Other kales tend to rot out. Mm -hmm. It gets too hot for them, but the Lachinata is really tough. It is from Italy. It gets hot in Italy. Um, you keep it clean, it does fine. Wow. I, when I first started coming here, I uh, t 
Tony, who's one of the other founders of this farm, described the greens from the greenhouse for me as virgin greens because they don't have the rain coming down on them, so they're perfectly clean, and you can see they're just gorgeous. They're just screaming for me to take them home. <laughs> I just love them. My most frustrating time of the year is that, when is it, like February? January, February. January, February, when there's just not enough sunlight, and every week I come to the farm and I say, do we have any greens yet? And there's just not enough hours in the day of sun for the greens to grow, and then, boom, in March, all, we get all these different greens. There's so many varieties I never even knew of. Can you tell me, where? how do you know about all of these, and, and what are some of those great varieties? Well, my, in the low time of the year, which is January, February, when mm -hmm. nothing's really growing, I sit and go through usually about 25 to 30 different seed catalogs, and now it's great, because I finally get hit, hitched to the internet. Um, uh -huh. Since Tony used to do all that, I wasn't allowed to touch the internet, but I'm finally doing that now. Um, just comb through seed catalogs and all over the place and look for different varieties. Mm -hmm. and we never go for the traditional stuff. We always look for things for varieties that taste good. We go for, yeah, we go for varieties with taste. Not for the storage like for most farms do. We go for, you know, unusual things. We like to do unusual and is that because that's what's demanded? Because I know you provide to many restaurants locally as well. That's what they're interested in? Well, it's been that, but we've always been foodies and we've always went to the food side of things, so. Yeah. We want stuff that tastes good, not, not, not that ship's good or store's good. We're always into the flavor. Because when I come in the winter months or the early spring, I see there's this beautiful uh, three or four different kinds of kale. The collard greens are amazing. The baby bok choy, the pak choy, the tatsoi, all of the different Chinese uh, mustard greens. And uh, you can buy them individually or you can buy them in a bag where they're all mixed for soups or salads, which I think is just such a great way to bring these greens into your diet. Just bring them home and throw them with some beans in a pot of soup and see what you get. It's just such a great way to try. Of course, I also like to walk through the greenhouses and eat my way, you know, from one end to the other. The other thing that I've noticed while I'm standing here is that in addition to some of these summer um, vegetables, is as I walk down, we saw some really unusual things like the tomatillos growing, which I always thought were from Actually, Mexico. Those are strawberry husk tomatoes. They're a little different. They're the same family. Okay, so those smaller. were the husk tomatoes. Those were husk tomatoes. Okay. And at the end, I saw a grapefruit tree in Connecticut. Yeah, we have some grapefruit trees. I actually bought the seeds back from the Caribbean in 2000. Um, actually, I kind of brought them back legally, but it's kind of late now. <laughs> um, they're actually white Caribbean grapefruit. They're, they have a lot of seeds in them, but the flavor is incredible. They're very sweet. Um, I've been picking fruit off and this is going to be the fourth year coming up. Okay. Um, and I also saw a fig tree and I could have sworn the last time I was here that that fig tree were, you know, maybe a foot or two inch well, we cut, we cut them, Yeah, we cut them back every winter to about three, four feet and by the end of the summer they're up to 20 feet, 25 feet. It's amazing. It's just amazing. And will I be able to buy those figs at the farm stand? You'll be able to buy those figs whenever they start ripening. Usually start picking them about the middle of July, but they're behind too because of the weather. Because of the weather. But they're loaded with figs. So, so we're just, just waiting. Another sunny week and hopefully we'll start picking figs. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing us around the farm today. It's just been a great education, and I hope that we'll see more of our friends coming to the farm on Fridays throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing me around the farm. Right. And the greenhouses. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I can't wait to go shopping in the store because they're open this afternoon. We're lucky it's a Friday. Um, but now we're in a building for the CSA pickup. I don't know if you can see the sign or not. So tell us a little bit about what it means to be a CSA mm -hmm. and how consumers can get involved. Mm -hmm. CSA stands for Consumer Supported Agriculture. Community Supported Agriculture, excuse me. And this is an opportunity for people to pay for a share before the season begins, and the farm staff pick the variety from the farm and put together um, your share each week. And all you do is you come and you grab it, and you'll get whatever is growing and whatever is seasonal and, and 
um, at peak. You'll get, um, right now you'll probably get a lot of salad greens, there'll be some kale, some collard greens, there might be some onions in there. It's really a variety of what's going on. I, I just happen to see them putting things together and washing it. It comes washed, it comes oh, bagged, wow. it's just ready to take that's home. That's amazing. So that's the pre-washed that you see. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's pre-washed right off the farm versus pre-washed and shipped across the country. Mm -hmm. There might yeah. be some chipolini onions in there, some hard neck garlic. So I remember the first time I did a CSA, I was so overwhelmed with the amount of produce that I got and so I actually it was great I made big kale lasagnas and froze them and I made soups and it, you know it'll change throughout the season so it's a good time to learn how to pickle but it's a great time to take out your favorite cookbooks and just explore what there is and right. um, experiment and to discover new things that you might not pick up at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. One of the other things that I love just about coming to a farm, any farm, is just bringing my children. Okay. Yes. I <laughs> have my I children with me today. They're having fun. And I know you're mom, so I know that you have the same concern as I do with getting my children to eat a healthy diet. And I teach them, you know, eat all the colors of the rainbow. But there's something really poignant about bringing them to the farm and having them experience to see where the food comes from. And I think that's a piece that's missing from our culture in general, is understanding where our food comes from. So it's one thing to say it's so important to support your local economy, to support your environment, for, to provide clean food locally to our communities, and that connects us. But it's another thing to understand what that really means. And until you go have a chance to go to the farm, you don't see that. I bring my children to the farm, I bring my children to the dump, and they see that cycle that everything comes from someplace and goes someplace. And the more they're involved, you know, there are lots of people. We come in the spring and we plant flats of seedlings or of seeds. So families um, can volunteer to help. Absolutely. It's a it's a community effort and it, it takes the whole community to keep a farm like this going. So if a family wants to get involved at Urban Oaks, either just coming to the store, volunteering, just supporting it financially, they mm -hmm. like the cause and want to donate, make a donation, how do they find out about it? What, how do they do that? You can go to, you can just come to the farm stand on Fridays and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to urbanoaks.org online. Okay. Um, we're listed under the Connecticut Grown website. We're listed under um, many, Slow Food, many of the other websites. So just look up Urban Oaks online. You'll see us on Facebook. You'll see our website. Um, or just come on down. And there are other options as well for um, ordering your food. If you want, and you don't want to have the surprise of a CSA, mm -hmm. you can get on our um, email list and we'll send you out a shopping list on Friday night and you place an order and we'll pick exactly what you want. And then you can come oh, and shop really? the stand and fill it in. So there are all ways to shop that's at amazing. Urban Oaks. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's that's terrific. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, one other thing I wanted to talk to you about is in your cookbook, which we talked about a year ago on Life and Style with Sarah, um, you talk about different things to do with different ingredients. Mm -hmm. So what's new with what's new with that? Anything? Well actually there there's quite a bit new with the book because that book that I self published mm -hmm. sold out and is coming out in September um, nationally. So it's gonna be much more accessible um, to all sorts of people. It's the same great recipes with a little more information and a little easier access particularly to the ingredients okay. um, and the health benefits of those ingredients um, and it'll just be easier to find around and where I'm working on a second book so there'll be more clean food as well. Excellent. And yeah, and when do you expect that to be done? No pressure. I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not committing to a timeline so. <laughs> smart. Very smart. But I can tell you that yeah. The more I come to the farm, the more those ideas get stimulated. The more I grow my own produce and involve my children in it, the more those recipes just keep coming because there are always new ways of eating greens and keeping, adding spice to your diet and keeping it delicious and fresh and keeping mm -hmm. our bodies healthy and balanced. That's great. Thank you so much, Terry. Oh, thank I you for coming. And we'll see you at the farm. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to go to the farm store right now. Um, thank you so much for watching Life in Style with Sarah. I'm Sarah Connor, and this is Terry Walters. She's been my guest tonight. Thank you so much. And I hope that you make it down to Urban Oaks. Don't forget to look them up on the web and try something new. Thanks, and don't forget to tune in next month to a new episode of Life in Style with Sarah. Good night.